Computational thinking, skills related to thinking like a computer. Now, computational thinking involves breaking down complex problems into smaller, more manageable parts and systematically designing solution. In the context of elementary programming, computational thinking is a guiding principle for constructing clear and effective code. Now, while I'm saying this, I also want to be specific in that computational thinking doesn't just apply to coding. It can apply to various industries and various problems in that it's a methodology for thinking like a computer, but it can solve problems in a variety of different circumstances. And some of the points I'm going to be going over in this video, you may use already every day as part of problem solving in a variety of different subject areas. So just keep that in mind that this is a skill that can be used in almost any industry, but we're focusing on it here in relation to coding. So we'll start off with the first one. And if you've ever done any form of project management at school or in your workplace, the starting point is that of a problem identification, clearly identifying what is the problem that we need to solve. All right, so what are we working towards? What do we need to address? And this will ultimately be our measure of success, how well we solve this problem. So it's important that it is clearly defined. Stemming from this as well then is decomposition. We break down this problem into smaller, more manageable parts. So in some cases we might get a simple problem and there's only one element to address. But in the real world, a problem is often complex, all right, and is made up of many different components. So that can be broken up and then that also gets supported on the development end. We work in teams in workplace environments and all the people in the development team probably have different skills in coding, in graphic design, project management, screen layouts, all of that. So by breaking up the problem, we also break up who can address different areas based on their different skills. And that's where decomposition is such an important part of this computational thinking process. The next step then is a pattern recognition, looking for similarities in the problem, which can simplify code. When we see areas of the pro problem that are similar to other areas, we can potentially reuse code or implement control structures such as selection and repetition that assist in streamlining the execution of these areas. We can also be using our library of modules uh, that we already have in existence and apply them in straight away minimizing the amount of coding we need to do. So that's why pattern recognition is so important. We don't want to be developing all our code from scratch. We want to be reusing and making efficient codes that allows us to do less typing and less coding because that ultimately will affect the processing of the program too because things are more streamlined and written more efficiently. The next area then is that of abstraction really looking at the program our problem and focusing on what are the essential features what are we specifically trying to address and then what functionalities we need to create in order to address them that need to be a part of our program now in doing this we are also doing the opposite what have we written down initially that now seems to look like it's not as necessary and we can remove that from our priorities in developing this program through being specific on what we need to target, we're simplifying development because we have key points that we're going to address while minimizing distractions. We now go over to developing our algorithm. Our algorithms such as flowcharts and pseudocode, which essentially are mapping out the logic of our program through giving step-by-step -step instructions on how the program will function, which is extremely important because we need to show our logic and that the steps make sense on paper before we start putting them into the system. If our logic is incorrect, a computer will not understand it, hence why computational thinking encourages us to think like a computer. So the logic must be nailed before we start entering code into a system. But obviously, our next step is that of coding, applying the programming skills to translate algorithms into a programming language, as per the top-down design, where we are now taking that algorithm, we can potentially be breaking it into sub-programs, we are applying control structures, we are getting our modules, and we're applying as much as we've done from all our planning, all those things we found before, we can now put that into our code. And hopefully now that at this point that we did so much before, there is not as much of redundant coding required because we're reusing those modules, we're putting in effective control structures, that our coding should be quite efficient and allow the program to process efficiently once it has been created. The next level is obviously testing debugging. Does our code work? 
Are there any errors? And are there any unexpected behaviors? Has anything caught us by surprise? And then obviously we've got to review our code and see how we're going to get around that. We need to have contingencies in place for errors that could possibly occur so that our program doesn't just crash on users once they start accessing our program when it's been published. So all of these need to have contingencies in place so that the program works and people don't panic when something happens when using our program. The next area is a practice which comes up in obviously many types of critical thinking and project management techniques and is that of iteration. The cycle of obtaining feedback, reviewing feedback and making changes. Getting stakeholders to have a go at our program, getting end users to have a go at our program, having different members of the project team or our peers to have a go at using our program and giving us feedback. Based on these testing outcomes that we're doing and they're doing and the feedback they, that they give us, we review it, we look for consistent information, and then we make changes to our program to ensure that it is effective and that it meets our target audience's needs. Which brings us to our final step of evaluation, assessing the program back against that initial problem statement where we started to ensure that it's meeting requirements effectively. All right, and ultimately, if we're happy with what we see in that evaluation and the points from our problem identification have all been checked off and it meets those efficiently, we can say that we've successfully created a successful program. All right, so I hope this video has given you an understanding of computational thinking. Thinking like a computer, a lot of these steps you might have seen in project management before in a variety of different areas, and that's because they are not specific to the ICT industry or programming. They are general and all over the place and successful methods of creating excellent solutions for solving problems. But I hope this sees here a variety of strategies which you can implement in your own critical thinking strategies to help you solve problems and obviously achieve success in the projects you create.